from Autodesk University 2009 in Las Vegas. Hello again, everyone. I'm Dave Graveline from Into Tomorrow. Welcome to another AU virtual interview. We have with us at this point, uh, this point, Donnie Gladfelter. He's an AutoCAD blogger. Well, welcome, Donnie. First of all, what is an AutoCAD blogger? An AutoCAD blogger. Well, it's uh, one of many names that people seem to call me these days. Um, but my blog is actually the CAD Geek, so it's uh, you know thecadgeek.com. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of my my slogan there is empowering CAD professionals, and you know I write about all sorts of things about AutoCAD. So if it's about AutoCAD or you know some sort of relating topic, I uh, I blog about it, right? And there you uh, go. Well, that in and it. of itself is cool, but what otherwise is cool in your world these days, especially as it relates to AutoCAD? As it relates to AutoCAD, so you know, of course, as a blogger, I kind of have a you know, an interesting insight, you know, with, you know, my readers and so forth communicating with me. And, you know, one of the lessons that I learned early on, uh, kind of going from that CAD management role, supporting, you know, some 250 CAD users and kind of into today where I'm kind of more of a consultant and trainer, um, you know, Autodesk, they, they release these really cool features into the software, which, you know, they're really cool in and of themselves. But, you know, what I find, uh, you know, the users seem to like the most are the just the simple ones that help them in their day-to-day -day, uh, routines. Um, interesting story. Just the other day, I was helping a, uh, a user working with Civil 3D. We were doing corridors, which uh, can get a little... A little complicated, right? And so we uh, we built this really neat corridor model uh, with feature lines and grading objects and everything else. I walked them through the whole process, and they were, of course, excited about it. And, you know, at the end of the day, I just happened to use a couple little commands. One was uh, revert, and another one was, uh, oh, gosh, what was it? Um, uh, flatten. Uh, two just very, very simple commands that have been in the software now for years. And, and it blew them away. And that's what blew them away. So, <laughs> you know, it seems to be the, the, the really simple things that just help people uh, you know, save time in their day-to-day -day is what they seem to think is cool. But, of course, you know, what I kind of geek out on, of course, are, you know, the brand-new features like uh, in, in AutoCAD 2010, we've got all sorts of really neat 3D features. Um, in recent releases, we've had things like Dynamic Blocks and Sheet Set Manager. And so that's what kind of geeks me out. But then, you know, kind of the wake-up call, of course, is when I... Uh, interact with these users who are using it day to day. Sure. It, it's like leaning over the shoulder of a friend who's using Word and say, you know, there's a shortcut for that or whatever. Exactly. And people say, I didn't know. And it's been there all along. And that's what's cool, especially about some of the neat Autodesk and AutoCAD features, is that you're helping somebody else in something that they're doing all the time and now have learned a, a more fun, interesting, more productive way to do it. Sure. And, you know, kind of to, to dovetail onto that, something that I've always found you know, kind of interesting. Sure, you know, Autodesk, they, they have to evolve the product, of course. Otherwise, people, you know, I guess, wouldn't really buy it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, you know, while they introduced things like the 3D modeling and, you know, again, in 2010, they had this parametric feature that they added. Uh, they had these really gargantuan, cool features, but they also seem to kind of remember that, you know, it's these little simple commands that just save a little bit of time here and there that people really gravitate towards. So, you know, another one that was kind of neat in this last release was uh, reverse. Uh, people have had list routines and everything else kind of a backdoor way of getting it done before, but you know, up until this year, it was never actually in the software out of the box. And so, you know, we've got things like that, and we've got uh, recover all, which happens to be one of my favorite commands. So, you know, they they also slip these kind of golden nuggets, as I like to call them, into the software. So, and it's funny how sometimes it's the little things, like you mentioned, a small feature that will make a big difference, and it goes to show how companies like Autodesk are paying attention to their customers, saying, you know, if it can now only do this, well, fine, we'll make it do that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they got the brain power to do it. Yes, exactly. And, of course, uh, you, as you're blogging about things, a lot of your readers are giving you feedback on these sorts of things as well. Like, oh, the program in and of itself, wonderful. Couldn't live without it. But these features that we're learning are some pretty cool things. Sure. And, you know, one of the, uh, you know, the posts that seem to get the most uh, hits on my particular blog seem to be about, you know, Excel interoperability. And, again, something that AutoCAD uh had introduced to it a couple years ago now, mm -hmm. just some, some better ways that Excel and, and AutoCAD can talk together. You know, they, they seem to be synonymous with uh, architects and engineers. So, What are some of the challenges specifically that you, you find your readers are facing these days that you're helping to address on your blog? Sure. So you know, probably one of the biggest buzz topics in kind of the, the CAD industry today you know, has to be BIM. Uh, building information modeling. And, you know, my background is civil engineering in nature. And so, 
you know, the big question is how can you have, you know, BIM with, you know, building as the operative word there uh, when, you know, what us civil engineers do has absolutely nothing to do with, the, you know, we don't draw buildings. Yes. And so <laughs> but you draw everything leading up to and from the building. Sure. <laughs> and so, you know, kind of the, you know, it's kind of neat right now. We've, uh, you know, it seems like most of the trades, they're actually designing in 3D now, and they're now kind of starting to, you know, embrace the 3D model and what it can actually do for them. So rather than just kind of drawing in 3D and kind of getting that ooh-ah factor, they're actually kind of starting to use it. And that's really what that the BIM, as, um, you know, I believe it is, kind of comes into play here where, you know, as opposed to just drawing in 3D, you're actually using it to, you know, better your design. So, you know, asking questions like, well, if I, you know, move the parking lot, you know, five feet away from the building, might that have an impact on the HVAC loads for the building? Um, or, you know, for the architects and engineers doing, you know, the building itself, you know, if I increase the height of the windows, will that let more light in? So it allows people to actually explore, um, you know, what is possible. And so that's really where uh, the software seems to be going today and kind of the other really kind of buzzworthy and also cool topic as well. And you think that's a couple of good examples of uh, of where we're headed these days? Is that is that really what's uh, getting the industry motivated and keeping them moving? I think so. Uh, you know, in, in this last year, I've kind of seen just in you know, the people I've interacted with, they've kind of gone from just drawing in 3D because it's a quicker, easier way to produce the 2D plans that people still build things from to, you know, kind of starting to embrace this whole BIM concept uh, as being more than just drawing in 3D for, you know, using it to... You know, better our designs, explore in a rapid sense, you know, what if, you know, ask that what if question. And so that's, uh, to me, kind of one of the, the really neat and cool and exciting things that are going on right now. And what else has you pumped about AutoCAD in general and where it's headed? Uh, what, what are you looking at the horizon and expecting? Sure. Um, so, you know, the, uh, the 3D features and everything else, uh, you know, in 2010, we've gotten all sorts of uh, you know, just radical improvements in the 3D sector. And you know, personally, I kind of see AutoCAD, you know, a lot of people today don't really see AutoCAD as a BIM solution, but I, I think it's going to kind of emerge as more of a BIM solution as it's able to, you know, handle more of the conceptual design phase of things. Since people are already doing 3D, um, you know, I think as the... Uh, the 3D features kind of mature over the, the next several years, I'm sure, um, that, you know, we'll see AutoCAD kind of reemerge as a, a major player uh, in kind of that workflow from, you know, civil 3D for the civil engineers into the Revit platform for the architects and engineers doing the buildings themselves. A lot of things to be pumped about. Of course, you know, it's uh, a rapidly changing field. And, of course, doing a lot of blogging, uh, which suggests a whole lot of writing of words, clever. Huh? Uh, rumor has it you're also writing a book. What can you tell us about that uh, and about AutoCAD yet? So is it kind of some of your blogging posts and responses? And is that what's happening? Uh, you, you could the book kind of uh, you know, say it as such. So uh, coming, uh, I guess it's kind of scheduled to come out in June of next year. So I'm in the process of writing it right now. It's going to be AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT uh, 2011, no experience required. That's at least <laughs> the tentative title right now. Yeah, and so it's actually kind of a, an interesting twist on kind of the the typical techie book, right? So as opposed to just being a bunch of, uh, you know, words with maybe a little exercise at the end, it's more of like a, a long, continuous tutorial. So, I mean, the book and all, I think, is going to probably round out of like the 900-page range. And so, you know, it starts out with just like this little cabin, and we're going to kind of take it all the way through kind of that conceptual design phase all the way out to the very end. And, you know, the best part about it is you don't need to know anything about AutoCAD. It'll kind of walk you through and kind of give you the, you know, Nice. The full perspective. Exactly. Be mellow and yet learn everything as we go. Exactly. And uh, if we want to blog on your site, where do we go again? So, yeah, uh, again, I am the CAD Geek. TheCADGeek.com uh, is where you can find me. And, uh, yeah, I post about AutoCAD and Civil 3D CAD management and, and just, again, just about any other CAD-related topic. Very cool. Donnie Gladfelter, thanks for joining us at AU. Thank you for having me.